You see, uh, the challenge that uh, we have here mm. is a person who thinks that they know it all. That's the only problem we have. Mm. Uh, I recall the days of uh, President Mwanawansa, President Sata. He would call anyone and ask for advice. Mm. But mm. this one, I don't think even his ministers can advise him. Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Uh, you, you are speaking I, I have been a minister. Too. I've been a minister. Mm. Minister of Finance, Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Energy, Minister of uh, Labor. Mm. You are doing that job on behalf of the presidents. We have a presidential system here. Mm. Uh, we have told Hagai uh, Ndeichirema that he should fire Mutolo. I said Mutolo is a little long cafe to pay the This Mutolo was single handedly issuing permits. Mm. Are you telling me that the entire minister, the whole minister, should sit down, not even the FRA? Mm. He, if you wanted an export permit, it was issued by the minister. That was a cabinet decision to export mess. Mm. So, uh, the iniquities of Mutolo, who is totally inept and incompetent, mm. was sanctioned by Hagainde. So, I tried to say, fire Mutoro, he's going to risk your job, he didn't listen. So now, now the man on the spot is him. If you, if you, if you fire Mutoro, do mm. you have the mess? If the boss had said no export of mess, would you export? No. Nothing. Even the Minister of Finance, you go to <coughs> Parliament and say, I am a bearer of the message from the President, recommending favorable consideration of the ways and means here I lay on the table. You don't say I am Idris Nawaku, I am a minister, or I am Sokotu Anestumbeko, I am bringing a budget. No, you say I am bringing it on behalf of the executive boss. Mm. So whatever the minister does, the bat stops on the boss. He's incompetent. I want to... how, how does he not see that his ministers are not delivering? Mm. I think that uh, it's agreed. Uh, you have a president who is driven by money making. For him, what he sees is profit. Uh, look at this. There is no money which Zambia has made out of this transaction. Because a bag of maize, a 50 kilogram bag of maize to Kenya is going at 150 kwach. Mm. That's what they sold for. But this is maize which was bought at almost 200 kwach. You collect it, you transport it, you fumigate it, you bag it. No profit was made. Now you ask them, what is it that he was looking for? What favors? These are people who didn't even support Ruto. They supported the other people. And so now he's using us to endear himself with President Ruto. I, I said on this uh, platform that... Uh, uh, because they didn't deliver fertilizer in time, I was asking them to use Consumers Development Funds to buy short maturing varieties and go to the regions where we are still having rains now and uh, plant short maturing varieties. Mm. I realized myself that I couldn't plant maize in Chisamba. I planted in Northern Province. It's, it's tasseled, it's coming now in January. But you see, when we speak, this man says he knows everything. He's Mr. Fix It. And there's nothing that he can fix. What he is done is to fix us. You cannot, you cannot, and you shall not, and you never export food to other nations when you are 
in short supply. I don't know whether it's the ignorance of not knowing when the harvest season happens. And unfortunately, unfortunately, this year there is no bump harvest anywhere. They messed up with the fertilizer deal and he was telling our our brothers and sisters in southern province, Wamba Kutino, Chino Chaga, fertilizer, Yaga Chelwa, and Mu 2023, Now, what are we going to eat even if fertilizer comes early in 2023? Because there's no harvest in anywhere, there were floods. Because these people, the way they behave, it's as if they have gone to God and God has told them what he's going to do. Mm. You know, have they got an appointment with God? You say, no, I'm going to sell this uh, crop in the shade because I'm going to harvest. Have you got an appointment with God? There are floods everywhere. Mm. Fertilizer was late. So now we are going to start eating ourselves. People are going to be cannibals in this nation because there's nothing to eat. You go to Eastern Province, there are floods. You go to Southern, there are floods. You go to places somewhere near Mumbwa here, the crop is, you know, it's, it's finished. So what is the plan? What is the plan? The disaster management report, which was supposed to be tabled August last year, was only being tabled in, in November, which showed that 50 districts in this country were on the basket case. They needed to start shipping food to them. Mm. And that's at the time he, they are giving him the report. That's the time when he's exporting the maize. So already we are going into 2023, 2024 in a very, very strange deficit. Mm. And the man doesn't care. For all I know, his interaction with the, uh, Kamara Harris should have been, please, but bedroom at the 16 million. He should have been asking for food relief from the Americans. Mm. Now we see that this same so-called Mutolo has issued a letter to the millers, please import minimum quickly because it's in high demand. Allah. Is that well, letter written by the minister? By the minister to the millers. They don't even have the etiquette. <laughs> of how to, they don't know government balance these people. They are naive. They are unschooled. And uh, where are they going to import the, the, the mess? From GMO infested regions. And this Kawana says, you know, GMO is good. For all these years, Zambia has been GMO free and the Haka Inde must introduce GMOs in this country. People come to Zambia to get maize because it's GMO free. And these people now are saying it's okay for our children to eat GMOs? Mm. Is that what God has for us? Mm. Uh, look, for all it takes, Zambians, you got what you wanted. And it's in your hands. It's time for you to understand that even in the Bible, the Israelites cried for a leader and he gave them so. The first thing he did was to introduce taxation. Mm. And what did Hakainde do? Taxation increased fuel, increased midi meal, short supply, electricity, everything, everything in 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 furtherance of the agenda for IMF. Mm. And I want Zambians to know that wherever IMF and their compatriots step a foot, check South America. There were lots of lots of instability. Southern America has not recovered mm. from the instability that was introduced because of IMF programs. Mm. You have to do these programs with a bit of understanding, not just blindly. You go and say, Yes, yes, Mkwai, I'm from Zambia. Corruption, corruption. They will fix you the way they have fixed the other India. In fact, they don't like him. If they liked him, they would have disbased the money. They are single handedly going to evict him from state house. Mm. Madam. Uh, I want to understand. I speak again as a pastor. Um, you people that are in the opposition, you people who are leaders, 
I've always said, let's work together. You see, now, this hunger, this uh, shortage of minimum, it's not only affecting UPND, it's not only affecting the PF and the, all the political parties. When it comes to food shortage or minimum, it's not a political issue. And this is where patriotic Zambians should not just look at issues from the political lens. I refuse that. And the, when we have a problem, in Sokanga ya ingira munga dadangu pansaka, it won't go for just one person there. If it's a common cobra, it will finish the whole lot of you. So, we have this problem. We have no minimum, which is true. My wife, uh, when we were out, she instructed the, uh, someone to go and get minimum for the boys at our football house, at the camp, where the cabinet stars live. And they said there is no minimum. I thought it was a job. No, it's not. However, I am saying, you as opposition leaders, why not come together and sort out this problem? Because, I'll tell you something, I would want President Edgar Lungu, I would want yourself, President Membe, President, this is a national issue. Uwa wa, tabamu seka. Okay? So, what are we doing? What, how are we going to solve this problem as a nation? Let's assume, no assuming, okay, UPND has made a mistake here. We have no medium. Whatever led to this, we will leave it in their hands. But how are we going to get out of this as a nation? Who has the instruments of power? We say never passed. Put in a figure for Paddy Bachitumkulu. At Bachitumkulu, we sent Wicker up at me Pandeva man. Nango Batata, Vamine Rubemba, Eve and Gajitamana, and the Sakuno. Hm. The corner can issue up. Let on Tonga Yashan. If you would take over, the one in the driving seat has to mm. humble himself to be able to ask for advice. Mm. And advice from whom? You see, uh, the challenge that uh, we have here mm. is a person who thinks that they know it all. But that's the only problem we have. Mm. Uh, I recall the days of uh, President Mwanawasa, President Sata. He would call anyone and ask for advice. Mm. But mm. this one, I don't think even his ministers can advise him. Is that, is that is that the 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 opinion that the public has formed over the president? No, or? I, th that's what I'm saying. You need to understand that pastor is mm. I've worked with him. Mm. I was his deputy during UDA. Mm. I know because you see, uh, it's not about sitting at a table when we are on this platform. The office of president, I listen to the pro program. Mm. Even the state house is listening. We have repeatedly told him that he's surrounded by novices who can't advise him. Open the Bible. He has the ministers from his church. They will tell him that any king in the Bible was surrounded by priests to advise him. Mm. But if you are surrounded by Eli's sons whose job is to eat the flank, <laughs> you get to this this position mm. you need to be astute enough to make a decision only after you have understood the implications political social and economic implications of your decision mm. there is no way that i can govern the way this one is governing absolutely no way mm. I would do far much better than this. Because first you must realize that you don't have the monopoly of wisdom, mm. which he thinks he has. And he made the first cardinal mistake to humiliate his predecessor in the showground there. And uh, 
other nations also as they were moving away, other leaders. Showground or heroes. I mean, heroes stadium. Mm. Even as other presidents were going away, they also felt humiliated. It is never done at a national inauguration that you invite opposition leaders to your, you invite Cyril Ramaphosa, you also invite the opposition. You invite Museven, you also invite Bob Wine. You invite uh, uh, President Munagagwa, you also invite Chamisa. What, what you want to achieve? What you want? You've left the league behind. If you want to that in the we are going to have a new change of man. We are going to have a club of new. Number one, who stadium could ya? You have President Munangagwa and you have Chamisa there in the stadium. What do you want to achieve? Who is advising? There are people who he can ask for advice. Who can easily offer it? Mm. Like uh, our former secretary to cabinet, uh, Bambula. Those are renowned and accomplished civil servants. If he just asked Uncle Mbula to go to state house, in Shishani, No, attitude So, what can we? I'm a Shinai Tapali Ubunga, Elevalera and that import Amatava. When do you place the orders? When do you place the orders and what time do they arrive in this country? Mm. Uh, because I know, as the Kenyan minister said, it's a lead time of four to six months before you can get a ship to load in Brazil and the dock in, 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 in Deban or wherever you want it to dock. And then you transport by land. You get with our bottlenecks, you get up to six months. So. Uh, what I can say to my relatives and friends, what we are just begging you to do as Zambians, hold this nation together. Don't be angry, hold this nation together. God gave us a peaceful nation and we have got what we asked God to do. We asked him to give us a leader, he gave us a soul. I'm sure he, God has a David hidden somewhere else. That David is already anointed. And just be patient that David is coming. So please, please, if you if you feel like never let Sabala and Dilanti, Iwe, which Tefi, Aya Fichita, I'm quite a moment if you are to get to Saulo, Ava Saulo, West to Quete, Wunga 465 watcher for 25 kg, and they are doing false pricing. He says he's an economist, should have known that ShopRite is selling minimum at this price. Is this a government regulated price or ShopRite is just doing it to embarrass us? No, no, ShopRite is a retailer. Mm. Uh, they put a markup. It goes all the way. Or to the millers. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to embarrass us or do anything. It's the economic environment which Hakkend has provided. There's high fuel prices, high electricity prices. They are even saying pay workers more. And if you change these numbers, you find that 462 kwacha divided by 20 kwacha is how many dollars is it? I mean, you, it, this is inspired by Washington. And he has gone to bed with a devil. And the agenda of America is not to uplift any nation. The agenda of a nation... America thrives when there's chaos. They are thriving in Libya. They are thriving in Afghanistan. They are thriving in Syria. So they are thriving. Americans are thriving in DR Congo. They've been looting our resources in Congo. And they want there to be chaos in Zambia so they can take our lithium. This is the, 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 the research button. And unfortunately, they have someone who is walking along with them. But uh, what if, uh, again, Madam Nawakwe, what if these same millers have the cartel to ground our government? Because they have the, for them to be producing this, it meant that they got mess from food reserve agents, they've got enough stock, and now, because these things, if they bought it, I'm just saying, 
if they bought a bag at 200 kwacha, a 50 kg bag, for argument's sake, nothing has changed. Whether price of fuel has gone up or what, if also millers have got the people at heart, they should not go to this level. Why not uh, uh, investigate the also? But who should? Hmm? Who should? The bank stops at the boss. I the can't really... I can't, look, uh, President Lungu was releasing mess. And if mirrors are doing that, President Lungu realized that uh, he was not a fan and friend of the private sector. That's why he started building up uh, national Zambia National Service milling companies. Why can't they? And there is quite sufficient capacity. If you think the millers are doing a sin, why not go and mill with, uh, with ZNS? The bottom line is there's no maze. And the second issue is that uh, the leader is a hard nosed capitalist. Mm. Has he ever met with the consumers? He only meets millers. Has he ever called us and say, How are you feeling? Has he ever actually uh, gone right now? I went to ShopRite. Why didn't he go to ShopRite? Mm. There's no mini meal except in ShopRite. We've been to a lot of shops in Osaka in the last 12, 24 hours. Mini meal was only available in this packaging, not in 25 kg, in this packaging in ShopRite. Mm. Not even in pick and pay. And this is very high-level marketing technique. I mm. did a bit of marketing. They call it false pricing. One dollar ninety-nine cents makes you think that you are paying one dollar, but you are paying two dollars. Two dollars, yeah. Yes. So the back two kwacha. Two kwacha. So you know uh, why is he sitting at community house and not being seen on the street? Mm. And I feel like we don't have a president in town because when there's a crisis, the only voice which is so soothing to the people is that of a president. The president should come out, this is what I'm going to do, we have a problem, my people, this is how I'm going to solve it. But there's mute, complete silence, except from Kawana who says, no, GMO is good. And these people must, must stop what they're doing because they are part of the problem. Mm. Because uh, I remember when I was Minister of Finance, mm. that day we had less than $50,000 at the Treasury. And the people, the economy was shaking, and people could hear the wind that the rumors that, true, true rumors that there's no money at the central bank. That's when I held the press conference that you see we're doing everything possible. I've just been on the phone with Washington put them in the corner and say, listen, do you want this government to fall? Mm. And the assurance of leaders is like a chamomile. Mm. It calms your brain. But when there's a problem in the home, the father runs away, the mother runs away, what happens? There's a problem in the home called Zambia and our president has gone underground. He must come out and tell us what are the solutions. Mm. You actually said uh, we need to talk to him. He has got access to money. The money he had, we told him this is Santa Claus which you are going in and say Consuelo's Development Fund. You end up with no emergency funds. There's no emergency fund for the country. What do you do? There is no medicine in the hospital. You go in the hospital. You don't even have, you know, liquid panadol. Mm. So if you're a patient, <laughs> you just have to do your best to swallow. There's no intravenous panadol mm. in the hospitals. He's sitting there. Have you ever seen him do inspection in the hospitals? When they go to medical stores, there's usually, at all times as I know, there's usually one month's worth of supplies of medicines in stock. They call it emergency because the army needs to have emergency. One month must never deplete below one month. That's why you see them take pictures. Talk to us. Talk to us, please. Go to the 
to the hospitals and see if, if in fact machines are working. If you go to UTH, you find the machines are not working. The cancer patients are suffering. And there's no medicine. It's not the fault of the doctors. It's himself. Because he says things are okay. He wants us to believe his narrative that things are okay. But tell her Ella Alan and Salah. Bandwa Kukarikirika and Ella Alan and Salah. Nina and Kukarikirika for forty two kilos every day. Aka, take up one of the five yaga. Eh? Nima Gabenga Yaka. Even if I'm a woman, i Mwe bantu bakwalesa chino echalo lesa tupele no luse lwakwe we are positioned in the most strategic location on earth mm. eight nations around us when you go to the kulungu port you are facing 16 nations in the great lakes region we are the most favored nation on earth mm. and yet we can't just find the puzzle to put together. The puzzle is agriculture. The puzzle is agriculture. We want to work with us. We are going to be having the tariff of the design. But if you believe for three months, in the moment, for just for three months, I show him what I can do. <laughs> Unfortunately, constitution does not allow. <laughs> <laughs> he can give me the instruments of power and say, I believe you for six months, Nashida Wankashi and Madam Nawaka. Admitted as a pastor, we have a problem because my church members are affected. The Zambian people are affected. Again, I don't want you people who are in the political uh, circles to look at this problem from the political lens. That one I stand firm, including cadres who are too good at judging, even when they are suffering, they are pretending like they have eaten. From UPND, from PF, from what? This, I am saying, is a national problem. How are we going to step in and help our government? Because when people start dying because of hunger, it's not just President Aka and they will be laughed at and this government, it will be the Zambians. Like you heard that minister from Kenya saying the Zambian people uh, have bought land, I'm going to buy land, they will be growing maize for us. Today we become servants for Kenya. That is too hurting. <laughs> I am simply saying, how can we come together and help this government. Madam, take off your political jacket. I, I, take off the political... I, I'm speaking like yeah. this because I've belabored the point for almost two years mm. on the issue of food security. Mm. I realized that he was exporting maize. I also realized that they had failed to distribute fertilizer. Mm. I provided solutions. I suggested that the money which was already in constituencies mm -hmm. should be reallocated to the agricultural inputs within the constituencies. Mm -hmm. My suggestion was that get even a thousand people resident in the constituencies together with their MPs and councillors to grow uh, short maturing varieties. That was in January, just before January. Mm. I was hitting a rock. Now, when you say, my pastor, that what solution can we provide? Here, the solution is not for Mutolo to be Toro, carrying around Toro, Toro, Toro. First, he should fire Mutolo. Mm. Second, he should come out mm. as a leader and say, there's a problem, what do we do? Mm. Uh, there are people like me who he has sown never to meet, never to talk to. So the only way I can talk to him is through this media. There are people who can help him if he wants, but this is not a president who asks for help. Has he personally told you that he can't talk to you, Madam Nawa? 
I know. I know. Mm. If you are in church, you are pastor, you are sitting in that chair and your friend is sitting there, hasn't he seen you? The system of government is that before a president arrives in a place, they will brief the presidency on who, who are, which other people are in that place. They are not a statistic. Yeah, but... Uh, so, but, uh, <clears throat> but pastor, uh, if you say we should help him, how do we help him? Let's take 90 to 120 days to grow. How do we help him? I suggested two, three weeks ago exactly what the Kenyan minister is suggesting. My suggestion, which I think is viable and he can do it, was to say call the commercial farmers to state house, not just the ones you want. Not Diego Kasiri, please, na papa da. Call all commercial farmers from Kushi, from Southern Province, from wherever. Anyone with a center pivot, call them to State House. Mm. Please provide them with seed and fertilizer to do a winter crop. Mm. Maize grows throughout the year. That's my solution. That's my suggestion. Mm. But instead of taking that suggestion, Mutolo Tolokas goes to, to Kenya. To go and tell the Kenyan minister, no, I have 20,000 hectares of land for you. Come and grow maize and take it to Kenya. The solution now is what President Mwanawasa did. Contract commercial farmers to grow maize now. We will be hungry for the next 120 days. And then give them free electricity as an incentive. Because no one is going to pay those high risk rates mm. to pump water and give them free fertilizer and agree on a price to sell back to government. That's what I would do myself. Mm. That's why I'm asking him to leave and give me six months. I can sort out this problem. And uh, that's the best way to do it. You so know. I don't have to sit with him. He has a head. I'm sure the, the, his symbols they have head. Please. Na Ask commercial farmers not to put up a, a crop of wheat. May is coming, all commercial farmers are going to put up a crop of wheat. Beg them that they should put up a crop of maize and you are going to take up the cost. That's the only solution. If we leave it as it is by December, because this is going to go to the December and we'll be planting in November, God willing if it rains, the harvest will be the other year. So we are in for a long haul. And for me, what hurts me is to see a country which has had peace being diverted mm. to areas where we don't want to go. Because You know, madam, um, again, I want to bring this issue. I'm still insisting. Me, as a pastor, I have problems with people who surround the president. Of course, we all I'll, have. I'll never stop talking about this. We all have problems with his, his advisors. Because, no, no, not just this one. My wife and I, we are sitting in the cathedral of the Holy Cross. There was a funeral there, uh, not a funeral, just prayers before President HH came into power. He sat on the left. President Edgar Longo sat on the right. President Edgar Longo didn't instruct anybody <coughs> to stop HH from greeting his friend. He stood there and the people were watching. I said to my wife, this is where I have problems with the protocols and the people surround the president. Here is the President HH. He rises to go and greet his friend, Muchech. They stopped him. People will recall that those who were in that. Uh, he stood there. <coughs> and this Muvita Nawa was trying to negotiate. You were there? I was there. I, I was very annoyed with the. I said, this is uncalled for. This man is in the opposition. You mean he can't just go and greet the president? Now, there he was the president, Edgar Chagwalungu. He didn't instruct anyone to say, I don't want to greet the... This is what I'm saying. Even now, 
we are faced with this problem no minimum no what why should somebody stop me from state house going to advise the president to say mr president let's do this even the opposition but i've got problems madam now i i i always say uh, that um, what i am is what will be projected uh, you mentioned in that incident, I, I was at the funeral of my late brother, uh, Dr. Mpande. May so rest in peace. Mm. And uh, there were other people in the city. And it's not that he didn't know I was in church. Who? Oh. A church. Mm. He greeted Zigzag Rose and left. You understand? It's mm. a very dangerous catch. Mm. It's a very, very dangerous catch. He he has people he doesn't want to talk to. And uh, you see, uh, three weeks ago I was to be arrested mm. because I commented and said that he's a badly brought up child. Uh, and I was referring to him insulting his elder brother because this is not the first time. He has insulted his elder brother on two occasions which I hear and we have clips. One in Pemba, he insulted him in Tonga, what we can't repeat, and printables. And then they came and they muffled it up and said, no, that's a, a Tonga saying. No, 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 you can't insult adults. And then he says, okay, because you, as a leader, you are a mirror of the society. Mm. So, uh, this toxicity, in my view, will end when we change and realize that Africa has to be mothered at some time with mother's hands. I see now. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, uh, this underdevelopment that we are suffering, you take uh, Tanzania, mm. our president was saying, no, war in Ukraine, mm. but in Tanzania, village headmen were gathering their people, and you say if you have 10 hectares, the government will fund you for 5 hectares, the next 5 hectares, they will say we'll support you 50%, you can supplement on it. And, uh, in Tanzania, people have planted. Soon we are going to be saving ourselves from maize from Tanzania. The difference is that that's a mother. That's okay. a mother. Oh. You look at you look at Malawi mm. when he, when uh, my elder sister was there. Things were changing, and mm. and 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 you know, uh, it's a, it's a phenomenon which Africa has to realize that. Time has come for inclusive leadership. Mm. And uh, that when someone is in office, they don't have the monopoly of knowledge. And uh, the quality of leaders you surround yourself with will determine the outcome of your leadership. And you must surround with yourself with people who can protect the state. As president, that's not the ultimate. There is a state. And the state is the state machinery. It includes everybody. Mm. The day after elections, you must be <coughs> able to say, I am the president, I'm walking ahead to embrace my nation. But if you go ahead and continue with the divisions, you end up where we are today. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.